Hey everybody and welcome to the kitchen. I'm Joe Michaels, the baking author, and tonight we're making spaghetti and meatballs. I am actually going to make my meatballs right now and then I'm going to pop them in the fridge so the flavors can kind of marry in the bowl. Um, I am grinding my own pork according to my kitchen scale. I have one pound three ounces and I have a pound of ground beef. That's very important. So I'm just, I have my smallest blade or my smallest grinder fit on my KitchenAid here. I'm going to plug it in. I never attach anything while it's unplugged or while it's plugged in because I've seen the movies. Yeah, we die. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that on about medium just to help the mixer out. And I have my food pusher. I'm just going to pop, start popping the pork down in there. I can hear it struggling. I'm going to give it a little more juice. can't see that but I'm gonna make some room I have as usual breadcrumbs an egg some milk some Italian seasoning because these are going with spaghetti so they need to be Italian flavored breadcrumbs or Italian flavored meatballs sorry my brain don't work too good it's still kind of early <laughs> I like to get this going pretty early so that it has time to sit in the fridge and those that those breadcrumbs have time to really moisten and get really delicious. Now I'm going to put this through here twice. The first time is just to grind my pork down. I made sure to leave the fat on the back. I just cut this off a loin, but the fat's going to leave some of that moisture in your meatball. So delicious. What I'm going to do is season this, mix in the ground beef, and then put it back through my mixer so it's all nice and fun in there. Now. My pork was still very cold. I had frozen it and then defrosted it. My pork was still very cold because warm pork tends to turn mushy. So make sure you keep your pork super duper cold. I'm just gonna hack the end off this ground beef, pop it in there with my pork. And this is just gonna be a hand mix. I'm not gonna use a mixer or anything because that destroys the structure of your meat. You don't want to over mix it. Okay, pop that in there, that over there. I don't usually measure, so we're shooting from the hip right now. I'm going to use a half a cup of breadcrumbs. These are Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. Lots of trash today. My hand is gross, but that's okay. I'm not going to put it in my mouth, I promise about a half a cup of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. May need more, may need less, I don't know. I'm not going to put the chopped onion in until after I have reprocessed it. Put in a teaspoon of Italian seasoning and then another one. Yum! We're going to use a full teaspoon of black pepper. And the way that you taste these is you cook a small patty <clears throat> taste and then adjust the seasoning as you like it. Teaspoon of basil. Can't put that in the jar anymore. A teaspoon of oregano. teaspoon of garlic powder. You can use just chopped garlic, but I like the garlic powder. I like anything that doesn't chunk up my meatballs. And then I'm going to add about two teaspoons of salt because I'm not putting anything in here that's going to add salt, so I just kind of measured it. About two teaspoons of salt. Now I'm going to mix this together and I'm going to put it back through my mixer to really grind it and get those seasonings in with that meat. I'm not squeezing the meat, I'm just kind of churning it with my fingers so it mixes together well. And I just use plain table salt. If 
These breadcrumbs will be very beautifully distributed through this meat once I get it back through this mixer. And I'm not trying to be perfect, so I'm just going to kind of smoosh it to one side. Flip my mixer on. Roll it and pop it in there. Never stick your fingers down in there. Always use your food pusher, please. And as it's coming out of here, I'm just going to gather from the other side, put it in the tray, and smash it back through there. When I give you guys a look at this, you're going to be astonished at how smooth it seems and how well browned the beef and pork are together. It's my favorite way to make meatballs. Just using my own pork that I've ground myself. You can buy it pre-ground at the store. Make sure you get the one with some fat in it. It really does make a huge difference in the moisture level of your meatball once you're done. need it all to come out just scrape off what's in the front there and if you can see this it's Italian spiced beef and pork and I'm dropping it on the stove now what I usually do crack my egg right into the bowl just on top there give it a little smoosh around with my fingers just one egg, that's all you need. You'd be surprised. And I'm not, again, I'm not squeezing it, I'm just mixing it around with my hands. Now we're gonna add a touch of milk, mix it around again. It's just to moisten up those breadcrumbs that are all through our meat and stuff. Try really hard not to touch everything with my gross hand. So let me get a paper towel. That will help me. That was about a quarter cup of milk. Now I'm just going to get in there and move it around, just churning it with my fingers. And I bet you're wondering how I taste it after it's sat for a, a couple of hours, huh? I cook a little patty of it. And if it's not salty or peppery enough, needs more garlic, Italian seasoning, whatever, 
it's that point where I add it and just turn it again. I need to wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, clean hands. Ta-da! Now I'm going to pick up my onion, open it, and just pour enough to kind of cover the top of that meat. You can see in there, it's just covered. Now I'm going to mix it in, then I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap, then I'm going to pop it in the fridge. And I will be back with you guys to show you how to cook them so you're not drying them out and so they don't become little charred bricks of meatball. Your family will thank you. See y'all then. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's been a few hours and I have my meatball mixture out of the fridge. It is pretty stiff, feels real nice. I'm going to drop a bit of it into this tiny pan and set it over medium heat. I kind of want it to cook pretty fast because what I'm not looking for here is the fat content or any of that. All I'm looking for is seasoning. So. I'm going to let that brown up and then I'll taste it. In the meantime, I'm going to pop this back in the fridge. If it needs some more seasoning, that'll be fine. The key here is to keep this cold because if you don't keep it cold, your fat in there will melt and your meatballs will be dry. So popping this back in the fridge and throwing my spoon into the sink. I've also picked up a tiny little plate to put my meat on after it's cooked in my pan. I'm going to turn that heat up to medium high. Just really got to cook fast. And some of the things that I'm going to be getting out of my cabinet are grapeseed oil, a medium sized pan like this, and then a big pot for my spaghetti sauce. I'm using canned spaghetti sauce. Sometimes I make it from scratch, but I rather like it out of the jar. Prego is where it's at. So I'm going to get some of that. And I'm not making my own sauce later either, or making my own spaghetti later because I'm just going to use it out of the package. It's just 10 times easier. I can hear it sizzling now. Should just take it a minute. Again, you're not looking for moisture content. You're just looking for spices. Let's see if we need to add anything to our bowl. We shouldn't need to add anything to our bowl. We added quite a bit of spices. And the breadcrumbs were Italian seasoned, so hopefully that will be enough. It's brown around the edges. Should have flattened it out a bit more, but that's okay. I'm just looking for it to finish cooking. Can't taste raw meat. I usually do this two or three times, depending on whether or not I nailed the seasoning the first time around. <clears throat> There are other seasonings you can use, like caraway seeds, if you like that kind of thing. Um, red pepper flake, if you want a spicier meatball. Lots of spice in the meatball. But I just like just plain Italian meatballs. My kids rather like it too. <laughs> La ti da. I just want to make sure this is cooked through because I'm not trying to eat no raw hamburger meat. I like rare steak, but not hamburger meat. Why? Because as well as being a writer, I'm also a reader, a rather avid reader, and I like Robin Cook a bit too much. <laughs> and I read this one book where this girl got food poisoning and died from ground beef. Okay, that's done. <laughs> <clears throat> Why ground beef? Well, because they rinsed out the head of a sick cow and thus she didn't quite get her hamburger cooked all the way and that's how she got sick. Okay, this is cooked through to the middle. I feel like if I add more salt it's going to be too salty, but I can taste the garlic. I can definitely taste the oregano. I 
I'm getting just a little hit of the basil. And there's an onion. Those are delicious. Okay, first time for everything. I seasoned it perfectly. Woo! Let me clear this out, grab the other stuff that I need to cook, and I will be right back with you guys. Okay, I'm back. I have two bowls over here because I'm going to take half of my meat mixture out and put it into that bowl and pop the other half back in the fridge to keep it cold while these are cooking. Into this pot, I'm just going to put about a half of this giant 67 ounce jar of Prego. I like the one that's flavored with meat. You can use whichever Prego you prefer. It's about half the jar, maybe a little more. I'm going to pop this in the fridge just to get it out of my way. I'm going to turn this over low heat, but I don't want to do it on this stove. -by. Okay, I'll do the small stove. -by. And I'm just going to put it over, okay, like one, and put a lid on it. So that will be warming up. Now, this is my grapeseed oil. I just put enough in there to cover the bottom of the pan. I'm using this Pompeian. Pompeian? I don't know how to say it. But anyway, high heat cooking oil. And the reason being is because we don't want this to hit its smoke point. So I use oil that I can get a little hotter. Meatball size, don't matter. It depends on how big you want your meatballs. These are going to cook for a while. So don't be afraid to make them pretty good size if that's what you like. You do you. I have to put this back in the fridge now too. Since my hands are about to get super yucky, I was not going to wash it. In my bowl, I'm just going to roll my meatballs. I like to do meatballs about that size. That's probably about a two inch meatball. It's not super big, not super small. But what letting those meatballs sit for a while in the fridge did was allow those onions to soften so that they're not big chunks of dry onion in your meatball. I'm just forming them and pop plopping them back in the bowl. Now, if your meat starts to make a giant mess on your hands, if the fat starts to melt on your hands, swap bowls, okay? Put that one in the fridge, get the other one out of the fridge. What you don't want is for your meatball to get warm. And I'm just eyeballing this, I'm really not measuring it. Just eyeball it, it doesn't matter. If they're all the perfect same size, if you need them to be the same size and you're just a perfectionist like that, use one of those little squishy ice cream scoops or a melon baller or whatever you happen to have around. Just going to get these rolled out and wait for this oil to heat up. I'll be back. Okay, whoo, my meatballs are in my little bowl. Gave you a little picture there. And then I dropped a little bit of the tiniest bit into the pan. Just so I can tell when the oil is ready. And once I really see it start to get jiggy with it, that's when I'll know. Okay, going back to the grapeseed oil. Now you can use olive oil for this, you're just gonna have to cook it on a lower temperature because grapeseed oil doesn't hit its smoke point for a really long time. And what a smoke point has to do with the meatball or any other kind of oil cooking um, is once it, it starts to smoke, it releases carcinogens and that's not good for you. So we don't want an oil that will start to smoke like now. Vegetable oil is an okay substitute Olive oil takes really low smoke points, so I don't recommend that one. Corn oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil. Those are really your high heat, higher heat cooking oils. Canola oil, not quite as much as grapeseed oil and peanut oil. Now this is really cooking nicely, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding meatballs. I'm not going to eat that. 
and just don't crowd them in the pan. Give them a little space. Again, I just kind of eyeballed these. They're not perfect. Some of them are a little bit bigger. Some of them are a little smaller. And that's fine. And once I have these in the pan and they're going pretty good, I'm going to inch that heat down just a little bit because that oil is going to retain the heat once it comes back to temp. From here, we're going to flip them. Brown them on all sides, then chuck them right into that sauce. That's where they're going to finish cooking. And it's going to be a while. Like, they're probably going to sit in that sauce for a good hour, hour and a half. And it will get hotter as I add the meatballs to it because I don't drain the oil off. I just toss it in there with them. So it does bring the temp of the sauce up quite a bit, very rapidly. <clears throat> Now, like I said, we're not trying to cook these through. Just cooking them until they are brown. So, time to flip them. They cook fast. Try to remember the order in which you put them in the pan. So, you can flip them over. It doesn't matter if they stay round, if they flatten out. I mean, really, they're meatballs. They're going to be good. And once I get these brown on the other side, I'll hold one up and show you so you can see how pretty brown they are. When we get to cooking our pasta, these should be done in the sauce already. And our sauce is just going to be beautiful, meatball-y sauce. Not quite brown on that bottom side. Well, while the second batch of meatballs cooks, I will be making more meatballs, which means I have to get my meat out of the fridge, make the meatballs, wash my hands. It's all very boring. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. I'm going to finish these, get these into the sauce, and then the rest I will do through the magic of video. It will magically be done <laughs> once I'm finished. Okay, yep, those are brown on the bottom. See, it does not take them long at all. I'm just giving them a little turn to the side here. Preferably the side where the most red is showing. This will be the last time I, I cook these. Like, it will be the last time I, I turn them. They do have a tendency to just pop open on one side. So, again, not worried about it. People going to eat them. They're meatballs. They're delicious. I ain't heard no complaints yet. And note that this oil is not popping everywhere. It's very calm. That's also because the fat in our meat is not melted and going all into that oil everywhere. Inch that down just another smidge. I'm on a cooktop so it retains a lot of heat as well. It's a very fine balance cooking with oil on this thing. Put a thermometer in it, two minutes later it's too hot, a minute later it's too cold. It's crazy. It's why I bought a deep fryer. <laughs> I know, I know. Take the lid off my sauce to get ready to dump these meatballs in there. Just going to pick them up and you can see they're still not totally cooked, but they're brown around the edges. So I'm just going to toss them into this sauce. They will now hold their shape in, in the sauce. So let me get these ones in the pan. Again, don't crowd them. Leave, give them some breathing room. I'm only putting six in this time. Not seven or eight, however many I had in the other one. Those are just going to chillax. I'm actually going to scoop this sauce over these meatballs, being careful not to break them. Now they're buried. I just buried them in the sauce. 
I'm gonna put the lid back on and I'm gonna go get my other bowl of meat. You've seen this. I'm just gonna keep going and I'll be back with you once I'm putting the last meatball in here so you can see what we got going on. Okay, everybody, I'm back. These meatballs are cooking on their last side. I'm gonna show you what's going on in this pot here in just a minute. Let me get these in there and get them stirred in. They are nice and brown. And don't worry if along the way, if, if like one side of your meatball got browner than the other, I'm pretty sure that is not going to signify the end of the world. It might, but I'm pretty sure it won't. Now since this oil is hot, I'm just gonna move it to another burner. It does not burn me or splash or pop when I splash because I splash everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and turn this burner off and move this guy over there. Okay, here's a picture. Doesn't that look delicious? Once I put this over here, and put the lid on it because I'm going to use that burner to cook my pasta on. I'm going to let it cook on low. Do not turn it above low because you don't want your sauce to burn. That's a, ugh, that's a nasty flavor. You can see it's already starting to pop and hit the lid. See that? Whoop, there it goes. <laughs> because the stove I was already hot and I'm on a cooktop here. So it's going to retain some of that heat for just a minute. And that grease and those meatballs have like brought the temperature of that sauce up a little bit. But I promise you it's on low. So we're going to let that cook for an hour, hour and a half, probably an hour and 15 minutes ish. And then I'm going to put the pasta on and we will have some dinner. Hopefully this will cool and I'll be able to clean that up before you guys come back. We shall see. Bye for now. Hello everyone and welcome back. I, my meatballs are done. I'm going to show you what's going on in that pot. Isn't that pretty? They're all ready to rock and roll. Now I just have a large pot of very salty water on to boil. I'm going to cook up my spaghetti. No oil in the pot, just very salty water. Uh, when you taste it, it should taste like seawater. So super salty. Um, once I cook this up, I will be back with you guys and we will chow down. I usually make a focaccia, but I didn't have time today. Yeah. When we get back, I'm also going to be, after I drain my pasta, this is some garlic infused olive oil. It has rosemary and a little bit of pepper flake in there, along with some salt of its own. So that's what I'm going to be putting on my pasta after it comes off of here and gets drained. I'll show you when I get back. It's going to be really exciting. See you then. Hi everybody, I'm back. Uh, my pasta's about a minute out. Just wanted to let you guys know what I did during the break. I shredded, grated, some fresh Parmesan to go on top of my spaghetti. And I took out a couple of tablespoons of that oil I showed you and about a third of a cup of the pasta water. What we're going to do is drain it, not rinse it, put it right back into the pot, throw that water on there, and then throw that oil on there and let it kind of soak both of those up. This will prevent it from sticking together and it will, that thirsty pasta, it'll give it that little extra sip of water that it's really craving right here at the end. We have 17 seconds. I love spaghetti. It was one of my comfort foods growing up. When I had gave birth to my second son, it was the day before my birthday and I got to go home on my birthday. My mother asked me what I wanted from a birthday dinner. There's a timer. And I said spaghetti and Oreos, Oreo cookies. <laughs> so that was my birthday dinner for my 20th birthday. No, my 19th birthday. Okay, this is my strainer. It's totally collapsible. I just love it. It fits right over my sink. Just dump that right back in there. And escape B. Now my stove is off. So it doesn't really matter. But it does, like I said, it does retain some heat. So we're not going to put it back on there. 
We're just gonna mix this pasta with that hot water and that oil. And let it sit for a few minutes. Now I'm gonna make myself a plate, come on over there and have a bite with you guys. Hope you're ready. Yay. Okay, you guys, here I am. Would you look at that? Doesn't that look fantastic? Oh my gosh, it is. All right, now we're gonna let these meatballs cool for just a second so I do not burn my mouth. I did not load my spaghetti down with sauce because I wanna be able to taste the pasta still. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this pasta. So nice. And then I'm gonna put a meatball cap to keep it from falling off my fork. <laughs> And we're going to take a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Now, you may have thought earlier that it was a little too seasoned on the meatballs. Whenever you cooked a piece and tasted it. But with the sauce that's very tomatoey, it really helps that flavor along. And the flavor of the meatball really pop out of there. Um, these are so good. Mm hmm. I am definitely going to enjoy this tonight. Now, you can either serve this with spaghetti or just serve these meatballs by themselves, or really any shape pasta. But the only thing that could possibly make this better is, better is a little bit of garlic bread or focaccia wish I had thought to make it, but I was so busy today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sorry. We can try again next week. And if you've subscribed, that's great. You're awesome. And if you haven't, what are you waiting for? The button's somewhere. Anyway, I will see you guys next week, and I hope you enjoy your dinner tonight. See y'all later.